Hi there, just wanted to give an overview of my setup for uh, with Rally Blitz apps and how I'm using it on my motorcycle. Uh, just as a quick overview, I'm running Rally Blitz Nav Pro here, which has the Auto Cap and Roadbook all built into it. And for pre-running, I use Motion X as my GPS app. But then um, I can also use this as a backup. If we go over here, then I'm running the standard Rally Blitz Nav here and can use that as a backup as well. So the Rally Blitz Nav Pro is connected to these switches here. So let me go back a little bit. So here you can see we're advancing the road book. And here you can see that this adjusts odometer. These are all connected through a Bluetooth box. That's described how to, how to build that with an Adafruit board on the Rally Blitz site. But there's also a vendor, and I'll add a link. There's a vendor who's building these boxes. This recharges with a USB and it lasts uh, two or three days. Um, you can also see the way that I've built this box. It actually has a light that shows uh, when you have the Bluetooth signal. The way that I have this set up is, at least for the, uh, for the iPhone here, you have it set up with a one inch RAM ball uh, connected to the top clamp. For the iPad, what we found is that running this one and a half inch ball, this RAM ball, works really really well. The iPad doesn't move at all. Um, we're running a life-proof nude case and then a life-proof nude cradle, although these cradles have gotten pretty expensive lately. So there's kind of universal cradles that you can get that just clamp onto the top and bottom that work just as well. And you can see how that, the one and a half inch ram ball actually mounts to the bottom of that cradle. I then have an SAE connector here that runs into a blue C Systems dual USB. And uh, lots and lots of people have tested these blue C Systems, including me, and put thousands and thousands of hours on them. And they are just very, very reliable. Certainly uh, more expensive than the Chinese ones you find on Amazon, but re really worth it. The other thing about this one and a half inch ram ball, so it doesn't move when you're riding, but if you have a G out or you chest plant or something on the on the one and a half inch ball, um, it moves. So it will move in an emergency. So both of the both of the eye devices are powered coming out of them and they that runs into the Blue C Systems dual uh, USB. But if the uh, Bluetooth box starts to get low, you can just unplug one of these and, and use this USB here. It's usually tied up in there to charge up the box and uh, get that topped off it only 10 or 15 minutes will give you a day's worth of charge on that so the way that i set this up is i have these euro connectors um, you can see behind the um, behind the headlight here and this is a baja designs kind of universal but it's one of their squadron race lights and this just worked really well it's a it's a nice tidy little design um, so i actually have let me run to the back of the bike here i have um, the standard headlight running to one of those Euro plugs, but then I've also built, um, added in on a wiring harness, two separate fused uh, lines for redundancy. So both of those go into these fuses and then run along um, the chassis here up under the tank. So up front I have one Euro plug for the headlight, and then I have uh, two more. And so one of them is just an extra. You can see I have that one capped off there. And the one up behind here is the one that runs into this SAE connector. Um, that would probably be a good idea to actually run a better connector there. But for now, I use that so I can take the whole device off and, and, un and power it. It's not switched. The Blue C system isn't switched. So you can just unpower it by uh, unplugging the SAE connector. So the other thing that I found with these devices, and a lot of people that have been running them, I actually don't know anybody that's cracked one of these iPads. Um, but certainly it can happen. And so a lot of people talk about, well, what's the backup plan if something fails? Uh, you know, if you crack your eye device or you, ex you know, explode it or have power problems, a couple of things. Uh, one of them is having an iPhone here that you can use for your GPS and then have it backed up with the standard rally blitz is, or, or some other kind of device that gives you cap and Odo. It's a great backup. The other thing that I do is, uh, on my phone, i am pulling my phone out here or another phone. Um, on the phone, I will throw 
a backup of the roadbook in PDF, so if there's some catastrophe, I've got Odo and Cap over here, and I can take this phone and tape it or strap it into whatever's left and still be able to continue on navigating. Some people then will still keep a paper copy of, of everything that they need. I don't tend to do that. Um, I think uh, a single set of redundancy is fine. The other thing that I kind of threw here on the front fender is it's always a good idea to uh, throw in an extra set of those iDevice cables because they don't tend to fail, but if one does, yeah, you're struggling a little bit. And, you know, the other thing is probably a good idea to um, throw in some backup for your USB power. This is actually a Blue Sea Systems just 12-volt plug with one of those uh, you know, Amazon 3-plug um, adapters. Certainly, you could put the regular one on there also. Just something that you can throw in your bag in case there's uh, some challenge with powering the, the whole system. One other tip that I will add here right at the end, um, a couple of tips. Um, one of the things that's important about the iPad is that if it gets mud on it or it gets water, the screen starts to react. So one of the things, and, and you know, it'll start to get crazy and goofy. So one of the things, once I have the remote system set up so that it's working really well, you actually don't need to touch the screen. You get everything set up. Um, your waypoints are in here. We'll, we'll pull the waypoints in. You know, I'll show you... I'll show you some waypoints here, so we know we have our we know we have our waypoints in there. We're ready to go. I set up something called guided access. You'll find it in the settings menu. Um, I think it's under general settings. And what it does is it's basically used to lock the app into um, uh, lock the device into a single app. So if you triple press on the there we go. I exited the app. Triple press on this really quick. It says guided access started. Now, if you press on this or you hit it, you do, do something with it, you're, it's not going to exit the app. One nice trick about guided access too, if you triple click or to get back out of it, i do it quickly. You, I created a passcode, so you need to enter your passcode. That just allows it to not uh, be accessed easily. One of the things you can do down here is you can actually touch, turn touch on and off. So you can make it so none of the touch screen works. The other thing you can do, and you can see what I've done here, is you can make it so part of the screen doesn't have touch screen, but the other part has. So there's ways that you can kind of customize what, you, what areas of the screen you want to be able to work. And what that'll do is it will allow you to be able to use some touch. You could leave like a band here on the side. Let's see if we could do this. It's not working, but you could make this square a little bit shorter, so you uh, narrower, so you could actually use the side for scrolling. But then, if you had dust or mud on it, it's not going to affect it. But what I usually do is I just turn the touch screen totally off. I just did that down here. Um, then you say resume, goes back into guided access. The app won't ac exit, so if anything's going goofy on your eye device, it won't exit. And uh, but your your controls still work perfectly for this and uh, you know for me this is this is the best way to set up these eye devices if you're using them because then you get dust on here you can you can wipe it off it doesn't have any effect on it you can just keep riding and of course if you have some problems with your button then you're gonna have to go to a touch mode and but you're kind of in a uh, limp home survival mode at that point anyway so your uh, primo race setup isn't running perfectly at that point as well so anyway that's a little bit of an overview of uh, how I have this bike set up and I'll put the links, oh, one other thing, sorry, this Ram Ball, it's a one and a half inch Ram Ball, it's actually identical to this one, which has this four bolt plate on it, but we turned it down on a lathe, and then drilled a hole in the top of it, and there's a landing in there, we were able to put a very long fastener in it, and it works perfectly, haven't had any issues with this, uh, Highway Dirt Bikes helped us do that, and you could probably look them up and they'll... Um, they'll help you out as well. But anybody that has a lathe can figure out how to turn that one and a half inch ball down so that it works properly. But anyway, as just a quick overview of how I use the setup and what um, has been kind of tested over multiple years by a number of different people and what uh, tends to work really, really well. I hope this helps. Thanks. Bye.